Hey everybody, welcome to this video presentation on Windows Server 2008 R2 Certificate Services. And in this video, we're going to take a look at auto enrollment. We're going to use a user authentication example. And we can kind of stick with the analogy of some kind of a state licensing agency uh, in this video as well to kind of keep that theme going. Whether it was a, an agency like a, a government agency that issued a license to a business, or whether it's the DMV. Probably in this example, using the DMV as an analogy might be a little bit better because we're issuing a certificate to a user for authentication. Now, if you watch some of my other video presentations out there, you saw a complete presentation on how to set up SSL-based encryption. So this video builds on that. Now, you don't have to watch the SSL videos for this to make sense, however, but it may not be a bad idea to go back and go through the initial installation of the CA the configuration of the SSL based encryption because in this environment we're going to have a folder on a website called cool web and the name of the folder is data and what we're going to do is we're going to take this to the next level uh, because this folder already has SSL required on it and we can see right here that we have a 2008 R2 server this is member server 1 we have IIS 7.0 installed we have a certificate that has been uh, installed on this server we have bound the certificate to this website and required SSL here on this data folder. So what we're going to do is we're going to take it to the next level. And what I mean by that is that if, if a user connects to this data folder right now, the connection is already going to be encrypted. So what we want to do is add another level of security and have the user be required to show me a certificate first for authentication before they can even get to the folder to have the encrypted connection. So this is a concept video. We're not going to actually get into the the details or the steps. We just we just want to talk about you know what the idea of user authentication is. And then in other videos we're going to go through the steps for auto enrollment and then in the last video I'll demonstrate the actual steps that we'll talk about to get that set up. In this presentation we're looking at the concept of user authentication. So basically, it would be something like this. If you were to go to an airport, or if you were to get pulled over by a police officer, in some situation, you're going to be forced to present your driver's license to prove who you are. For example, at the airport, before you go through security, you got to show your driver's license. When you walk up to the ticket counter, you got to show your driver's license. Probably the, the example of going through the security line is probably better because they use that little light uh, to look at your driver's license so they can see the, the seal from the state to make sure it's a valid license and make sure it's not some kind of a, a fake ID of some kind. So what we're going to do is require this user that's sitting at this computer, this Windows 7 desktop, we're going to require the user to have a certificate. So not the computer, but the user. But that user's certificate or driver's license will be stored on that computer. Because there are different types of certificates that we can issue. We can issue a user certificate and we can issue computer certificates for authentication. The difference between a user certificate and a computer certificate would be like a user certificate would be your driver's license. A computer certificate would be more like the license on your car because everybody in that car is good because the license on the car is good for the car and anybody in the car. The user certificate is for the individual user so that's more like a driver's license analogy. So we're going to kind of stick with that but the the driver's license is going to be in the car because it's in your possession. Kind of the same thing with the user certificate. It's going to be on the computer but it's tied to the user. It's not tied to the computer. Okay, so that's the idea there. Now, a lot of companies might use something called a smart card or a cat card, and they will take this to the next level where you have to have a card with the certificate in it, something that you have, and then something you know, which is a PIN. Now, in this example, it's kind of the same idea, but there's no PIN required. All we have to do is present the certificate. We don't have to actually have the card with the certificate and the PIN. So this is not a multi-factor based authentication method. Now the user may still be required to provide a username and password.
that's possible, or the certificate may just be good enough. If you got the certificate, you can get in. In other words, we're going to allow anonymous access to the folder. We're not going to require a username and password, but we're going to require that the user actually have a certificate to gain access to that folder. So that's kind of the idea behind this one. So let's just take a look at it in the interface real quick. So what we're going to do in this environment is we're going to go to this folder data and we're going to require that the user show me a certificate. But the authentication method on the folder is still anonymous, so there's no username and password required. And we're just going to hit apply, just like that. And what that's going to do is require that the user show me a certificate before they authenticate. And it says client certificate kind of generically. So under the realm of client certificates, it could be either a user certificate for the individual user, or it could be a computer certificate, which would be like the, the license plate on the car. It'll support either one of those client type of certificates. Now in this environment, what we have is everything's 2008R2. We have a domain controller with Active Directory. We have an enterprise root CA that has a self-signed certificate which means he has a public key embedded in the certificate and a private key. He has the ability to issue all these different types of certificates. And let's show you that real quick as well. So what the CA will have is a complete list of all these different certificates that potentially the certificate authority could issue, which would be this list of templates right here. And there's also a list of certificates he's currently allowed to issue. And we can see that a user certificate is indeed on the list. But we're going to have to do some modifications for that to be automatic, for it to be auto-enrollment. This default user certificate that lives out here, by default, this template won't work for me to build a certificate from. I'm going to have to build a new template to support auto-enrollment, and we'll talk about that more later. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this CA's user template as a base to create a new type of user template so we can automatically enroll that to the client. We also have a certificate already installed on the server. Now back over on the web server, this is MS1 my web server, we can see that we already have a certificate bound to the server. We can see that we already have a certificate installed on the server. We can see on the website under bindings that this certificate is bound to the website and we can see on the data folder that we currently are requiring SSL and then we're going to add the ability to require authentication. Let me just apply that. If I go to my Windows 7 workstation right now and I just go out and I connect to Cool Web, we can see that works fine. If I go to the data folder, we can see that it requires SSL. But right now, there's no authentication required. So what we're going to do is add to that the requirement for authentication. So if I apply that, come back over to my workstation, and try to connect, now I can't connect because I don't have a certificate to authenticate. And all I'm going to need is the certificate because anonymous access is still enabled on that folder. No username and password is required. So just simply requiring the certificate is kind of cool because now the user just has to show me that certificate and then I'll let them in. But if you don't have the certificate, you can't authenticate. If I switch back over, if I click ignore, apply that, switch back over, refresh it, I get in no problem. So it's kind of an interesting concept. And then what we can do is we can use our certificate authority to issue a certificate to the user. One other thing I want to mention that's kind of important is that this Windows 7 desktop already trusts this root because of the AIA information is published to Active Directory and the client knows where to find that authority information access. And AIA just means authority information access, which is here's the location of my server's certificate, which is published into Active Directory. So the AIA is equal to authority information access, which basically means here is my root certificate. Not even root, just here, here's, my, here's my certificate. In this case, it just happens to be the root certificate because we only have the one CA. And the Windows 7 client knows where to find that by default. So this certificate, 
because the Windows 7 desktop knows to look in that LDAP path in Active Directory by default. He's already gone out and copied down the certificate and brought it back down to his machine. So he's kind of already done this. He's already grabbed it and brought it down. So he already knows who that server is up there. We'll just put this right here on the side. Just like that. Is in the next video, we're going to show you what the steps are to set up auto enrollment so I can issue a user that's using that desktop computer a certificate automatically after we have the server set to require. So let's go back and just leave it set to require authentication. So we're back at the website. We're going to leave it set to require. We're going to apply that. We're going to go back to the Windows 7 machine, just verify that we're requiring authentication. Okay, so here's my problem. I have authentication required and I need to figure out a way to get a certificate to the user that's currently logged into this computer. Thank you very much. We'll see you in the next video.